I'm Leah Mayos, the project coordinator for the Drug Free Communities Grant here in North Reading, and we're here today on Community Impact Team Connections, and I have a special guest with me, Shelly Joseph. She's here, who's an attorney at the law offices of Joseph & Joseph in Newton, Mass, and she's here to talk about underage drinking and consequences. Welcome, Shelly. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Um, so Shelly, would you please start by telling us just a little bit about your background? Sure, thank you so much for asking me to be here today. Of so course. my name is Shelly Joseph. I am a partner in the law office of Joseph & Joseph. I'm a criminal defense attorney. I've been practicing law for 25 years. For the first eight years, I spent my time working at the Attorney General's office and the Suffolk County District Attorney's office where I was a state prosecutor. And after my first child was born, I left and started my own law practice and have been exclusively handling criminal matters for the past 25 years. I'm also a parent of two high school kids, mm -hmm. so the issues concerning drugs and alcohol are issues that not only affect us personally, but also professionally. I have begun speaking about the effects of drugs and alcohol, um, particularly with high school kids, because throughout my career I've noticed similarities, even though I've been on both sides of the fence. Mm -hmm. um, one of those similarities is about 50% of the clients that I have now, mm -hmm. and I'd say about 50% of the people that I prosecuted then, um, were all between the ages of 16 and 25 wow. years old. Mm -hmm. So it's this age group. And then about 90% of all of my clients, regardless of whether they were adults or kids, mm -hmm. um, have something in common where that they are in the court system because they have made bad decisions or mm -hmm. exercised bad judgment, usually because um, alcohol or drugs were involved. So I've sure. become very passionate about educating people mm -hmm. in the hope of decreasing some of the numbers that go through the court system. Wow, that's great. Okay, so I wanted to start by asking you, why are kids drinking? Kids are drinking for a whole host of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, number one, um, the amount of stress that our kids are under right now sure. is incredibly high. Mm -hmm. um, the stress that we put on our kids as parents through the school system, mm -hmm. through, you know, kids are growing up much faster now than we did when we were right. kids. Um, the adolescent brain hasn't fully developed yet. Uh -huh. and research shows that the left frontal lobe doesn't develop until approximately the age 25. Mm -hmm. So kids are by nature very impulsive and they're looking mm -hmm. for that instant gratification. Uh -huh and are not exercising good judgment oftentimes because they just don't have the cognitive ability to do that. So when you say to yourself, like, oh my God, like, what was my kid thinking? Mm -hmm. They probably weren't because they okay. just don't have the capacity to do that. Um, they're not looking at long-term consequences. Mm -hmm. um, they're looking at that short-term gratification. Um, kids are bored. We live in the suburbs. Uh -huh. um, there's not a lot to do, and the access to alcohol mm -hmm. is great. Um, you know, growing up, we didn't walk around with Poland Spring water sure. bottles. Now everybody's got a bottle, whether mm -hmm. it's water or vodka. You really can't tell by mm -hmm. looking at it. Um, so for all those reasons, um, kids are drinking more, and then you add the internet into sure. that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have one or two friends come over on a Friday or a Saturday night, mm -hmm. somebody gets wind of it on Snapchat or Instagram, and all of a sudden there could be 30 kids at your house without even blinking an eye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what are some of the risks related to underage drinking? So I describe the risks um, in three different categories. Okay. Number one, there are criminal um, consequences to underage drinking, which mm -hmm. I'll talk about a little bit more in depth. Yeah. Um, number two, there are civil consequences, which are like okay. financial things that, can, that you may be responsible for mm -hmm. if bad things happen. Um, and three, there's a bunch of collateral consequences mm -hmm. that nobody thinks about until you're there. Sure. Um, so the... The first thing to realize is that things are not the same now mm -hmm. as they were when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, kids are experiencing more. Um, they are asked to mature much faster mm -hmm. now than we were, and they're trying to be more adult-like. Sure. If you look at what the media is doing, what advertising is doing, think about the tobacco campaign uh -huh. and how successful that has been. So many mm -hmm. fewer people are smoking cigarettes now mm -hmm. than they were years ago. Um, and that's all because of the media blitz that went out there uh -huh. very successfully. But the flip side is true with alcohol. Alcohol is very sexy and enticing. Mm -hmm. um, malt beverages taste really good. You don't taste the alcohol. They look good. If you look at the advertising in um, um, newspapers, mm -hmm. in magazines, on TV, 
it looks like a lot of fun and kids are also mimicking what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and there's much more access to things. So when you think about the risks involved, you have to think why those risks are there now mm -hmm. and just accept the fact that things are different now right. than they were when, when we were young. Mm -hmm. um, so to go through those three things sure. um, specifically, um, I always like to start with the criminal consequences okay. because that seems to be the most basic mm -hmm. of all the three. Um, the bottom line is the law is really simple. Okay. The drinking age is 21. Mm -hmm. um, whether we like it, whether you agree with it, whether it should be, I mean, we can argue about it to a blue in the face. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is that's what the law is and that's what the law will be unless it's changed. Right. Um, one of the things that I like to do is educate people about what that really means mm -hmm. so that you can talk to your kids, you can make the decisions that work well for you and your family, mm -hmm. but if you know what the consequences could be, you can have meaningful discussions. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole host of criminal activity that can happen when people are drinking and some of the things that I've seen mm -hmm. just off the top of my head. Um, you know, minors in possession of alcohol, yeah. that's a misdemeanor charge. Mm -hmm. It is a criminal offense. Although it's only punishable by a fine or probation, okay. it still remains on somebody's criminal record mm -hmm. and it is a misdemeanor offense. Um, providing alcohol to a minor, mm -hmm. that just doesn't mean a parent that buys. It's somebody who actually gives access to alcohol to another person. Mm -hmm. Somebody under the age of 21 can be a provider. Mm -hmm. um, that's actually a jailable offense. Oh, wow. Um, then there's drunk driving. Mm -hmm. You know, if you drink and you drive and you're under the influence of alcohol, mm -hmm. you could be caught with drunk driving. Bad things happen when people drink mm -hmm. and don't know how to control themselves. Mm -hmm. I've seen many cases um, that have been charged as malicious destruction of property, okay. damaging other people's property. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a bunch of kids who are walking home from somebody's house after drinking think it's kind of funny to smash other people's mailboxes. Mm -hmm. um, just an example, but that's malicious destruction of property. Um, sexual assaults increase when alcohol is involved. Mm -hmm. um, sexting, which can become pornographic. If you're under the age of 18, even if you take a picture of yourself mm -hmm. and you text it to somebody else, that's actually dissemination of child pornography because wow, you're okay. not 18. Mm -hmm. The person who receives it, if they provide it to somebody mm -hmm. else, that's also dissemination of child pornography. Um, there's all sorts of cyber crimes mm -hmm. that can result. People feel as if they're invincible. They can do anything they want and what they type and send out can become mm -hmm. some kind of, of cyber crime. All sorts of community crimes happen. Mm -hmm. um, people spray paint graffiti, they urinate in public, sure. um, on your own property. Mm -hmm. um, and assaults ha increase in fights mm -hmm. um, when people are under the influence of alcohol. So even those aren't, aren't alcohol crimes, they're absolutely related to alcohol consumption mm -hmm. and um, any chance of those can increase with alcohol use. Um, the easier ones to talk about are the civil consequences. Okay. That's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, what are civil consequences? Civil consequences is damage to other people's property. Mm -hmm. If a mailbox gets smashed mm -hmm. and you have to pay back that person, okay. that would be a civil consequence. And so there can be civil consequences um, to drinking. Um, also, you know, medical consequences. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be sick and um, end up needing medical care. Sure. Um, the third area is the bigger area where a lot of people don't realize that there can be a lot of collateral consequences okay. to um, alcohol behavior. Um, if your kids are in public schools and if they're athletes, mm -hmm. if they are caught with alcohol, the MIAA, which is the umbrella agency to all high school sports, mm -hmm. um, gets involved and your child will be suspended from participating in high school sports for a okay. period of time. It can be 20% of the season, 40% of the season, 60% mm -hmm. of wow. the season, or bar depending on the infraction. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is if your child is a junior or senior and is counting on a scholarship sure. to go to college, right. um, that can just go away. Mm -hmm. And even if there's no criminal charge, mm -hmm. um, merely um, you know, being involved with alcohol or drugs, mm -hmm. and that term involvement is very used very loosely, mm -hmm. can affect their ability to, to play sports for that season. Sure. Um, schools take independent disciplinary action, and different okay. schools, depending on the school district you're in, will take different action mm -hmm. regardless of what the offense is. Um, but there can be um, disciplinary actions that um, run along the same line as criminal actions, but they're not contingent upon each other. Even if a criminal case gets dismissed, a school mm -hmm. can still take disciplinary action. Um, health issues, you know, alcohol poisoning, um, visits to the ER, mm -hmm. um, criminal records, employment. If you do get charged 
um, a criminal record does follow you. Sure. And even though a juvenile record mm -hmm. may ultimately get sealed when they become an adult, mm -hmm. if your child um, who's a juvenile is working at a summer camp, that still gets disclosed. Okay. Um, and if they're applying to college, there are certain questions that get asked about criminal activity mm -hmm. that sometimes has to be disclosed. Um, in that same regard, financial aid can sure. be linked mm -hmm. to um, offenses. Um, if your child is placed on probation, mm -hmm. there may be a curfew imposed, there may be other yeah. restrictions that can affect you if your child's not longer able to drive. Mm -hmm. um, you may be counting on your child to drive around siblings or to get themselves to and from wherever they go. Mm -hmm. Sometimes driver's licenses are linked to um, alcohol and other criminal okay. behavior. Um, your insurance can increase, mm -hmm. um, and um, college admissions can be contingent upon that. Um, and um, you know, two other things that people don't really think about is if your child is um, interested in going into the military, okay. um, this can affect that. Um, mm -hmm. And um, immigration consequences, if you're All not right. a citizen of the country, mm -hmm. um, even if you are here legally, that right to stay in this country can be revoked if a lot of these add up to each other. Oh, so wow. there's a lot of collateral consequences mm -hmm. that people don't realize yeah. um, can be part of this. Okay. So I know you just had mentioned um, some of the risks related to underage drinking. So what would you say, have you seen any personal or family consequences that have come up um, due to a minor in possession? Um, yes. I mean, being charged with a minor in possession mm -hmm. of alcohol um, you know, it's interesting how things have changed mm -hmm. throughout my 25 years of practice. You know, what used to be not considered a big offense mm -hmm. um, has become very seriously. Okay. Um, police departments are taking them seriously. Schools are taking them seriously. Mm -hmm. The local district attorney's offices are taking them seriously. And everybody has programs, sure. which is wonderful. I mean, yep. education is key to everything, but mm -hmm. people are paying much more attention to okay. it. Um, the police clearly know what the hot spots are mm -hmm. in town. Mm -hmm. um, they are patrolling them. There's neighborhood watches that you know mm -hmm. know where kids are going and where kids mm -hmm. are are drinking. Sure. Um, and instead of just saying, "Hey, let me call your parents and go home," mm -hmm. um, you're getting a court summons to come to court. Okay. And then that's what spurs on all these other collateral things wow. that I spoke about. Sure. Even if the criminal matter can go away with a dismissal, mm -hmm. or with some probation, mm -hmm. or with some type of education or community service. Right. Um, sometimes these collateral consequences aren't mm -hmm. contingent upon that. Okay. And so how does the law interpret the term possession? So possession is, is it can be interpreted in two ways. Okay. There's actual possession. Here's my cup of water. Uh -huh. I am clearly possessing my uh -huh. cup of water. Now the cup of water is in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, we know because we just saw that that was my cup. You haven't drank from it. Mm -hmm. um, but that could be constructive possession. Okay. It's there. My lipstick is on there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's clearly mine, not yours. Although mm -hmm. I'm not actually holding it. That's constructive okay. possession. Okay. Okay. Um, so the law is clear. Like if, if the if the police come to a party, mm -hmm. you know, a neighbor calls. If there's a party, it gets broken up. The uh -huh. police come. I'm here, there with the red cup. I'm clearly possession possessing sure. that alcohol. But what about the other 40 kids who are there that may be holding cups mm -hmm. or may not be holding cups? Okay. And that's where the area is gray. Mm -hmm. And they will look to, well, was every kid there drinking? Are they breathalyzing mm -hmm. every kid? Are they, you know, I was just cleaning up. I wasn't actually drinking. I'm just throwing the stuff course. into the, um, uh -huh. um, the garbage and helping, you know, these mm -hmm. poor kids who are hosting the party trying mm -hmm. to keep the peace. You don't want to have to litigate that. Right. Okay. Um, and, you know, the police will err on the side of we're taking everybody and we'll figure mm -hmm. it out later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what are the criminal consequences for purchasing or providing alcohol to minors? I know you did kind of touch on it a little bit. I um, did. So, th so there's a difference between possessing alcohol, okay. being under the age of 21, mm -hmm. and purchasing or providing alcohol to somebody okay. under the age of 21. So, you know, interestingly enough, possession of of um, marijuana, possession <laughs> of alcohol, uh -huh. only carries a fine or probation. You can't go to jail for that. Oh, okay. But it still is a misdemeanor sure. offense, and mm -hmm. you know, just like any other misdemeanor, when you answer that question on an app. Application, mm -hmm. you have to say yes if you've been convicted of it. Right. Um, providing alcohol to a minor. I'm actually mm -hmm. going to read it because okay. sometimes reading sure. the law actually is better yeah. than just explaining it. Mm -hmm. um, the Mass General Law states that whoever furnishes any alcohol beverage or alcohol to a person under 21 years of age mm -hmm. shall be punished by a fine of not more than $2,000 mm -hmm. or by imprisonment for not more than one year. Or both. Wow. Okay. For the purpose of this section, the word furnish, and this is the part that I think is particularly mm -hmm. interesting, shall mean to knowingly or intentionally supply, mm -hmm. give, provide, or buy, or to allow mm -hmm. a person under 21 years of age, except for your own children okay. um, or child, um, to have um, possession, uh, to have alcohol in their possession. Mm -hmm. 
So the word provide is interpreted very, very mm -hmm. loosely. You don't have to actually purchase it. You don't actually have to give it, mm -hmm. but if you allow it to happen, okay. you know, you can't just do the don't tell me, don't show me. Sure. Um, if you allow it to happen, then you are providing alcohol to a minor. Mm -hmm. okay. And a minor can also be um, charged with providing alcohol to other minors. You don't oh, have to be an adult for that that's to happen. That's interesting. Okay. All right. So would you please explain a little bit about what social host liability is? Sure. So social host liability is a legal theory. And what that theory is, it's, um, it's a legal theory whereby a social host may be held legally, mm -hmm. financially, and or criminally responsible for injuries or damages caused by a host, okay. uh, I mean by a guest at, mm -hmm. at, their, at their home or on their property. Um, in other words, you can be held responsible for the negligent and criminal actions of your guests. It's mm -hmm. as simple as that. Okay. Um, homeowners insurance may or may not cover depending on the situation. Oh, wow. Um, and a social host um, is just somebody who serves or allows alcohol to be served um, at their property that they control. Mm -hmm. And that's the important word in all of this is what do you control? Sure. You don't just have to own the property mm -hmm. in order to control it. Okay. Um, you may be renting a vacation home. Mm -hmm. um, you may own a vacation home and not actually be there, but it's still mm -hmm. your home. Sure. You may rent a house. Okay. Um, you may rent a hotel room mm -hmm. and you could be a social host in a hotel room even if you're just renting that hotel room mm -hmm. for that one night and you don't actually have to be present. If I handed you my keys mm -hmm. and say, hey, go use my vacation home, mm -hmm. I could be held as the social host, okay. even though I'm not physically there. I mean, again, it's all very fact specific. Mm -hmm. um, some questions that um, um, people ask me is, you know, how to avoid liability. Sure. You know, can I avoid liability mm -hmm. by not um, being there? Mm -hmm. The answer is not all the time. Mm -hmm. um, can I avoid liability if I'm upstairs and my kids are downstairs in the mm -hmm. basement? Um, if you truly don't know what's mm -hmm. going on down there, there's a chance you can avoid liability. Okay. But if there's any inkling whatsoever mm -hmm. that you have allowed your kids to be mm -hmm. in the basement with a bunch of other kids, I mean, let's say there's 50 kids down there and you're upstairs, uh -huh. you can't really claim sure. um, innocent. Right. Um, can you, um, you can't avoid liability by just saying, here, here are the keys, but don't tell me what's going on there. Uh -huh. um, you know, as I said, everything's very sp fact specific, mm -hmm. but just because you're not present or you don't f actually own the property doesn't okay. mean that you're not a social host. Okay, gotcha. So what are some ways that parents can help prevent underage drinking in their home? Um, by educating yourself and okay. by talking to your kids. Set clear guidelines. Mm -hmm. I mean, talk to your kids about these difficult issues mm -hmm. um, and have open communication. Number one, we want our kids to be safe. Sure. Um, and you know, as much as we can preach don't, 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 mm -hmm. we also know that kids are going to experiment, they are going to try, and they need to know that they can get home safely. Mm -hmm. If they've been drinking or if a friend's been drinking, have them call you for a ride home or have there be an adult that they mm -hmm. can call to get home safely. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, give your kids um, a way out. You know, maybe have a secret password as, hey, mom, I need some popcorn. If, if they get a call at you know, 11 o'clock mm -hmm. at night saying, you know, can you bring me some popcorn? You know that your kid wants to get out of wherever uh -huh. they are and, and come and pick them up and mm -hmm. let them know. Um, talk to your neighbors. You know, if you're not home, mm -hmm. and, you know, make sure your neighbors are watching out for what's going on at your home. Um, if you are going to host a party, the takeaway from this is have fun, host parties, uh -huh. let your kids be kids, but do it properly. Sure. Chaperone, serve food, have an excuse to go downstairs mm -hmm. and see what's going mm -hmm. on. Um, make sure that you're checking bags. If kids are coming okay. to your house for a party, there's no reason for them to be bringing backpacks mm -hmm. in. If they are coming to sleep over, backpacks and sleepover stuff should go upstairs into the bedrooms. Okay. The kids are downstairs wherever they're going to be mm -hmm. you know, together. There's no reason for kids to be water bottles in your house. Mm -hmm. You know, kids come to my house, water bottles, you know, at nighttime, a bunch of kids are over. I'll say, you know what? I have plenty of beverages inside. You can leave yours outside. Okay. Um, be aware that kids are smart. Uh -huh. um, if kids are in your basement, if there's a little window, kids oftentimes will put stuff in the backyard, open the window, bring in, mm -hmm. or like the side door through the garage. So okay. know that sometimes bags being checked on the outside Outside, mm. still are finding their way to the inside okay. through other ways. So, you know, check up downstairs every so often. Mm -hmm. Bring them some food. Come yep. and check up. Make sure everything's okay. Um, and another question that guests asked of me mm -hmm. often is, is it okay if I just collect everybody's keys? If the kids are in the house, I know that they'll be safe. Mm -hmm. It's not okay. And it doesn't always work as well as you plan. I mean, okay. sometimes kids don't understand the power of and the potency of the alcohol. 
Mm -hmm. um, I remember a situation that I had to um, deal with where um, parents did collect keys and the kids okay. started throwing up and had to go to the emergency room. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that things got a little bit out of hand and it just didn't work out the way they mm -hmm. expected it to. Okay. Um, so just be smart and talk mm -hmm. to your kids and make sure that they know that there's a way out if they want a way out. Sure. Okay. Well, that's great. Um, and I, those are about all the questions I had. Was there anything else you wanted to add or any last points? Or No, just be a role model for your kids. Okay. Uh, talk to them. Have open discussions. These are hard things to talk sure. about, but we yeah. do find that. Um, the more you have open discussion and you're involved with your kids, try to have dinner once a week, know who their kids mm -hmm. are. Um, we all seem to be running in different directions. Sure. Um, you know, drop off, pick up, mm -hmm. help your kids grow and um, help them make the right decisions. But also know that if they are going to make the wrong decision mm -hmm. or a bad choice, um, let them know that they can come to you for help. Okay, that's great. All right. And I just wanted to remind our viewers that the Community Impact Team is a substance use prevention coalition that can help address questions um, and provide answers to substance use along with the Youth Services Department. And the Youth Services phone number is 978-357-5281. So again, that's 978 Three five seven five two eight one, or you can email coalition at northreadingma.gov. So again, that's coalition at northreadingma.gov. And Shelly, thank you again for speaking with me today. I really thank appreciate you so much. it. Thanks. And if anybody ever has any questions, you're welcome to call me. My Perfect. office is in Newton, 617-332-0090. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate thank it. Thanks.